Hi everybody, today I want to go over six acronyms you need to know in order to pass your real estate exam. If you know these six acronyms, you'll find these concepts much easier to remember and it'll help you pass so you can get your real estate license and start selling. So without further ado, let's begin. I got them jotted down on my phone, ready to go. The first one I want to talk about is MARIA. So MARIA stands for Method Adaptability Relationship Intention and Agreement. Method, adaptability, relationship, intention, and agreement. See, that's a test for a fixture. A fixture is an item that's incorporated into the land. So an example would be a chandelier, or maybe a mailbox, or different things you could think of that were once personal property, but now could be considered real property. The way you test is with the Maria test. M is for method, A is for adaptability, R is for relationship, I is for intention and A is for agreement. Maria, method, adaptability, relationship, intention, and agreement. That is a test for a fixture. The next one is stud. Stud is for the four essential elements of value. It stands for scarcity, transferability, utility, and demand. Some of you guys learned the word dust, demand, utility, scarcity, and transferability. But when I think of value, I don't think it's dust is very valuable. But whatever works, stud, dust, tis a duh, for all I care, as long as you remember the four essential elements of value. So stud is scarce, excuse me, stud is scarcity, transferability, utility, and demand. Next to my list, I have to tip. To tip stands for time, title, interest, and possession. And that is a test for a joint tenancy. Joint tenancy is a type of concurrent ownership when you own something with somebody else. You guys hear about joint tenancy and tenancy in common. The test for joint tenancy you need to have is to tip. Time, they take it at the same time. Title on one title. Interest, if they're equal interest. And possession, do they both have right of possession? The only one of those that applies to tenancy in common is possession. But for joint tenancy, you need all four. And the way we remember them is with the acronym to tip. Time, title, interest, and possession. And joint tenancy also has the right of survivorship. So, so far we talked about Maria, method, adaptability, relationship, intention, and agreement, which is test for a fixture. Stud, scarcity, transferability, utility, demand, which is for the four essential elements of value. And now to tip, which is the test for joint tenancy, time, title, interest, and possession. I shouldn't say test, more like the essential requirements, whatever it is, that you help, whatever it is that helps you remember. Next up, the bundle of rights. UPTE, U-P-T-E-E, -E, UPTE, that helps people remember the bundle of rights. And what that stands for is use, possession, transfer, exclusion, and encumber. You have the right to use it, you have the right to possession, the right to transfer, which means sell it, exclusion, which means keep people out, and encumber, you have the right to limit the use. So up T is the test for a bundle of rights. Use, possession, transfer, exclusion, and encumber. Next up, clock. There's no K in this acronym, so it's just C-L-O-C, C-L-O-C. And that is for cable parties, lawful object, offer and acceptance, and consideration. These are the four essentials of a valid contract. Okay, so clock, C-L-O-C, capable of parties, lawful object, offer and acceptance, and consideration. That's the acronym for the four essential avowal contract. Now, some of, you guys might, some of you guys may be asking about writing. Writing is not one of the four essentials. Writing is not applicable to all contracts, such as implied contracts. A lot of people think writing is essential because when you transfer ownership of real estate, it must be in writing. But for example, if you rent a property for under a year, it doesn't necessarily need to be in writing. Okay? And these are the absolute essentials for all contracts. So be careful with that. Writing is an essential for when you transfer ownership, transfer title of real estate, but it is not essential for all contracts. Such so as when you sit down in a restaurant, order food, you have an implied contract that you're going to pay for that food. Okay, and that's not in writing. So the essential valid contract is CLOCK, C-L-O-C. Once again, capable parties, lawful object, offer and acceptance, and consideration. Okay, next up we have old car. 
OCAR is for agency and it stands for obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality, accounting, and responsibility. And those are the essentials of agency. And I'll read it again for you guys. Old car, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidential, accounting, and responsibility. So those are six acronyms that'll help you pass your real estate exam. I want to make sure you guys write these down and understand them and go over them again and again and again and again and again and in your head. Okay. So let me read them once more for everybody. Maria method, adaptability, relationship, intention, and agreement to tip time, title, interest, and possession stud scarcity, transferability, utility, and demand up T use possession, transfer, exclusion, and encumbrance clock. Capable parties, lawful object, offer and acceptance and consideration. Old car, obedience, loyalty, disclosure, confidentiality, accounting, and responsibility. So those are six acronyms you need to know. Now there's other little memory techniques you can remember like Nova, New, those things you just say over and over again. Littoral lake, repairing river, littoral lake, littoral rights for body waters that don't move, repairing rights for body water that does move. I like the acre, 40,560 square feet. You flip the first two, you get seven. The last five and six, 11. So if you like slurpees, remember seven, 11. So there's all sorts of memory techniques to help you pass the real estate exam. And sometimes obviously you just got to know your stuff. So remember those five acronyms. It'll help you pass the real estate exam. And don't forget to look at our show notes below for links to the prep agent website, ACEable website. We got webinars going, crash courses, and other items that could really help you pass the real estate exam. We really tried to adapt the site to cater to everybody's learning style. So I know everybody's different. Everybody learns in a different way. So if you have any questions, Put them in the show notes below in the comments, in the comment section. We'll answer whatever we can. And be sure to check our Instagram. It's prep underscore agent. Instagram, we're posting new videos, new reels, new posts that will help you pass the real estate exam. And with that being said, it's Joe from Prep Agent. And as always, keep it concise and keep it simple. Because we know that studying for this exam can be boring and you want to get your career going. I've always said, if you can't sleep at night, open up one of your real estate exam books and you'll be out in no time. Better than any sleeping pill I can imagine. So what we did is we created a website that could adapt to everybody's different learning styles. From flashcards, to questions, to webinars, to videos, audio. No matter what your situation is, no matter what your learning style, we want to make sure there's something for you so you could pass the real estate exam. So without further ado, let me go into a few details.